this is us talking. It's prayers for us. And Sarah has written this to help us to pray. You know, and uh, like this says, Supreme Lord Jesus, I want to trust you enough to let things happen without constantly striving to predict or control. The other book, Jesus Calling, was Jesus talking to us. So this comes from a totally different perspective. And so um, I'm not a devotional user. I, I mean, and that was hard for me to say this morning to these people who own bookstores. <laughs> I said, you can give me every devotional in the world because I probably have had it, but I'm not that type of person. And it's what I told you a few minutes ago. I didn't feel welcome on my daddy's lap. And so in my mind, I equate my earthly father with my heavenly father. So I'm afraid to come into his presence sometimes, especially with a devotional to get close to my heart. So I'll work on that the way I, I need to work on it. But I, I love God with all my heart, soul, and mind. And this is a wonderful, wonderful book. And it is for devotions. It is to help us pray. I believe in praying 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I pray without ceasing because I need God at every point in my life. But this is a great way to start the day out. The, um, the greatest influence in my life as far as Christianity was my grandma Smith, my mama's mama. That one that didn't want her to go to mm. California and, and become a singer. And when my brothers and sisters would be at home and, or off at a rodeo, my mom and daddy would make sure that uh, my grandma and grandpa could keep me at their house. And I might stay there for maybe a week, maybe two weeks. And their house was in the middle of nowhere. They had electricity, no TV, no air conditioner. If you wanted to be cool, you just opened up the windows and prayed for a nice little breeze. <laughs> but every night before she would go to bed, she would put, take her hair down. She would have it up in a braid. She was a Pentecostal lady. And uh, she'd give it that brush and that most people fail to do today. And then before she ever got into the bed, she would kneel down beside her bed and pray to the Lord. She'd pray for her children. She'd pray for her grandchildren. And do you know what, Bob? Almost every one of her grandchildren were led to the Lord because of her influence. Mm. And wow. there's a bunch of them. Mm. What there's a great a bunch of them. Great inspiration uh, and motivation. The ripple effect yeah. of that. And when I, I had uh, my first grandchild seven years ago, and I asked the Lord, please, Lord, let me be the grandma that my grandma was to me. So one day, Kate and I were coming off the slide at, uh, at our little playground there at Chalky, and um, we came down, and she was in front of me, and and she was about to get up, and I pulled her back, and I said, Now, Kate, just look up at that sky. Look how beautiful that sky is, and everything's beautiful. She wasn't probably more than four, maybe three. And she looked, and she said, Oh, Momo, that's so pretty, you know. And then, she, and then I said, Okay, let's go again. So we went back to the top of the, of the uh, slide, and we came back down, and I had already forgotten about what I had just told her. And I was kind of doing like this to get up, and she was pushing back, and I just laid back. And she said, Momo, look how pretty. Mm. And I want to be mm. the kind of grandma that my grandma was to me for these kids.